Hey guys, ELB here, and today I want to talk about Independence Day Resurgence. Now this is what I'd call a Thanksgiving Day movie, or I guess in this case 4th of July, because basically this is the kind of movie you can put on at Thanksgiving when you have everybody over and the turkey's cooking and everybody's bored, or maybe after you've eaten and you're fat and lazy and you don't really want to do anything. It's that kind of movie. It's got this bland kind of sub-level of appeal where it's kind of like sort of maybe interesting to some people, but not really interesting to anyone. The biggest problem you got going on with this movie is the writing. The writing is freaking just unbelievable. Basically, the plot is stretched so thin from the first movie that there's nothing really left. They just like started like plugging the holes with new plot devices like Oh man, uh, yeah, the aliens didn't completely die off in the first one. There was a land war in Africa. And then they're like, oh, uh, there's another big hole here. Let's shove in like a, a new love interest for Goldblum, because that's interesting. Oh yeah, and Judd Hirsch was really popular in the first movie, so let's give him like 40 scenes that have nothing to do with the main plot, because that's what we want to see. <laughs> So if the writing wasn't necessarily bad, all of the subplots, that kills this movie. You've got subplots about guys on a boat. You got a subplot about his dad, Judd Hirsch. You got a subplot about a woman who wants to read stuff. You got a subplot about an African warlord, Thor, and Thor's girlfriend, who's the president's daughter, who is the old president. And then you got the new woman president. And then you got people on the moon. You've got like aliens all over the place. There's like 40 plots going on and they all, he, he like gives all of them a little slice of time. So you can't get too interested in one pot, plot or I guess too bored by one plot. It's kind of like having a cat and then switching the toys every five minutes so it stays interested. Oh my God. How are we gonna keep kids with short attention spans interested in this movie? Well, I guess we could always just like remove the plot and insert like lots of scenes of things blowing up. Oh my god, that's genius. Lots of things blow up in this movie. Lots of things blow up in this movie. Like the White House, the moon gets shot and bloated up, bases get blowed up, um, spaceships get blowed up, people get blowed up, cities. Like, I don't know, like 10 cities on screen get blown up or have like asteroids dropped on them and all kinds of shit. And interspersed between all of these explosions, we have tons of little characters that we don't really care about. I mean, I like Judd Hirsch and he's great. You know, he was really great in numbers, you know, where he wasn't Jewish. And this movie where I don't know if he's Jewish, but he seems pretty Jewish. Anyways, he is the best pseudo Jew that's ever existed in any movie ever. So like the very start of the movie is basically like you got like nothing happening. Basically it just shows like how great the world is, how like super duper awesome it's become because we have alien technology. So we got like spaceships flying around and lots of big guns and America is the best. America is super duperest in the world, clearly. And then after we get all that stuff showing how great America is, we go to like an African like tribal village where it looks like they probably don't even have fresh water. Then Jeff Goldblum is like looking with a woman that we didn't ever get introduced to that is his girl, friendish ex flame fiance. And he goes to an African warlord who has been fighting a ground war, I guess without any outside assistance for like 20 years or something. And can really, even though he looks pretty pretty tubby he looks big he's like the best warrior in the world in hand-to-hand -hand combat and then he like tells the guy he's like to kill them you gotta get them from behind and then the other white guy is like that's amazing and then he totally like gets right into it and he wants to be a warrior guy eventually and he like analyzes this this warlord guy who has like dual machetes this is why i'm doing this dual machetes this is what this means Anyways, so for the first time in 20 years, because I guess America didn't want to help the African people, so the African people are like, stay out America, which I can't blame them. 
Jeff Goldblum finally gets to check out this this alien ship that supposedly landed in like the African outback and stuff, and it's got this huge, huge drilling. It's got like a big drill thing, and it's like it was drilling to the center of the Earth, so it needed magma. So like the warlord guy is like, dude, I totally have like aliens in my brain. They're like causing him to like have hallucinations and visions and stuff. And he like draw, he has like an, he, so they show a part where he draws like an exceptional picture. He like draws like a perfect, like a super gradiented detailed, like fucking three by two painting picture of this big sphere thing. So basically he got like an alien message that a sphere thing is important and then President Bill Pullman was like always drawing the same thing but really shitty. So we can just assume that the African warlord guy took art in school and Bill Pullman did not. They have to use a pilot that is a shitty pilot that's actually a pretty good pilot but a shitty pilot and that's Thor. And Thor is a good pilot but he is not very nice. He's a bad man who does bad things. So he's got to be put on the moon where he runs a space tugboat that's built like a tank and it has little armies and these armies are like grabbing grab onto stuff plot device he pulls things with his with his he's like a crab it's like a crab spaceship anyway he takes his grab crab spaceship and then he's like crabbing around and grabbing stuff but then there's stuff blowing up and then he's got to like grab it and push it and the commander doesn't like him pushing or saving people's lives so he's like that's it McCloud you don't get to fly a ship anymore you're grounded and then his the Asian guy's daughter shows up and she's a woman I guess there's 20 women on the moon so every woman gets a lot of men tension so Thor's friend wants to bang the new chick but the new chick's dad is Asian and that means he doesn't like Caucasian men but Thor has a girlfriend who's the president of the previous movie's daughter who's now crazy because the aliens are like super smart and they have psionic powers that make our brains all screwed up when they're like doing their thing and he's like they're coming and then you're like whoa so basically there's like a piece there's like a big box there's well there's a ship and it comes through like a warp hole and then the moon guys are like fuck it and they they shoot the shit out of it and then a box like like a big square shipping container alien shipping container drops and it's like thunk, thunk, thunk. and then they're like well fuck I guess that's that and they're like whoa we won we defeated aliens even though these aliens are like Clearly the audience, if they, they, clearly the audience knows this is not the same goddamn aliens. So then they're like, Thor, you need to go get that box and I need to get it. So Thor grabs Goldblum, he flies to Earth, the, you know, a, a, a travel that takes, you know, a long time now to go to the Earth to Moon. And then flies back in his tug and no one fucking low jacks his tug. Nobody says, hey shit, Thor stole a tug. Let's get that mofo back. No, they don't say that. They're like, it's Thor. Let him do his thing. Inside of that, eventually, they take it to a place, Area 51. And everybody's like, oh, it's okay that Thor stole that tug and Goldblum and they stole that alien artifact and shit. They're like the guys, right? They're important. So then Area 51, they got that case thing and finally they break it open and Data, who gets added to the to the cast again, which is awesome. He has the funniest goddamn lines in this movie. Christ, half the ticket price is watching that guy mug for the camera. They pop open this bad boy, and it's got a, it's got like basically a big nut in it. Ball. It's like a beach ball. It's an alien space ball. It's a space ball though. They're only one. It's not two. And it like they like t some guy like touches it. Who, the really stupid comic relief guy, who's like an accountant, touches it. And it's like, yo brother, what's up? And the guys are like, whoa, you're a ball that talks. That is beyond our understanding. There's aliens in the universe, so that's not a big deal. But they're, everybody is like fucking mesmerized. They, they get in there and they are like talking to it. And the ball is like, we're super friend aliens. 
and we want to be your super friend alien too and the alien and then all the human guys are like that's pretty cool that kicks the ball is like if you want to be super friends you're going to get super fucked by these aliens because they're coming and a mothership's going to come it's going to blow you up and the human guys are like damn so they're like you need to interrogate guys so the the president's like Screw it, I'm gonna go interrogate a guy in the same way that the old movie, I got my neck crunched, like Data got his neck crunched, so we're like psionic and shit. And the aliens get interrogated, or the alien like grabs his neck and he's like, eh, aliens are bad, you gotta kill all of them. And then everybody's like, well, I didn't know that. And then they go and they're like, we gotta kill the queen, cause she's badass. So after Thor rescues like the little cargo container with alien space ball in it, like a huge mothership comes out and for like probably like 15 minutes, it basically just kind of floats and scares people until it eventually <laughs> lands right on the earth and then it starts drilling with the massive drill thing. Like a new one, cause the old one is I guess broken or something. So the new one's like, I need to get that coal. Sweet magma core. These boat guys have to identify a drill thingy and the drill thingy doesn't really do anything other than give us a timer for the movie. So it can be like the old movie where there's a timer. So you got a drill meter instead of like a clock. It's like a drill meter and it's going to hit the earth's core. And when that happens, the whole world blows up for whatever reason. I don't think that's science. Maybe it's science. I'm not going to go there, but it, it, if we, we get the idea, that if it drills into that place, it's gonna blow the shit out of our planet. And that's bad. So we gotta stop that guy doing that. Anyways, they get the band back together and kind of pilots, oh, oh God, I forgot about the black guy pilot. So not Will Smith because he didn't want to be in this movie. Will Smith's character's dead. And not Will Smith is his son. So I guess it's Jaden Smith. But he doesn't look like Jaden. He looks way cooler than Jaden Smith, okay? Don't get me wrong there. They didn't fuck that up. Not Will Smith, the pilot, doesn't like Thor because Thor, like, bumped his ship and he, in a training exercise and now they're, like, really not happy at each other. And Thor's like, sorry, bro, but Black Guy's, like, really taking it deep. Even though, like, a bajillion people die in this movie. And he's like, well, you almost killed me. And, like, a bajillion people have died. They get in some ships and they're flying along with their zoomers and aliens attack lots of cities. They all blow up. Yeah, cities, cities blowing up. People getting killed like a bajillion. Not Will Smith's mom from the original movie makes kind of a cameo. She's a nurse even though she was a stripper. I guess she got a scholarship because she saved the world or she saved a couple people with the vice president woman. Anyways, she got money, I guess, and she decided to help people by becoming a doctor slash stripper. Maybe she's like a candy stripper. She's like 40, 50, 60. She's old, okay? So she's got like superpowers, but she like, she there's like a bajillion people dying, and then she's like, there's a baby crying, and a pregnant woman is like, my baby's gonna die. And then she, the woman, then, not Will Smith's mom is like, no, he won't. I will save him. And the city is getting utterly decimated. Like the entire city is like exploded kind of like right around her. And it's just this, this one building with the heli with the helipad with, you know, that's the hospital and not Will Smith's mom's running. She's, she's running up the stairs and the pregnant woman's like, very, very slowly walking towards a helicopter that's land. Because not Will Smith's like, you gotta save my mom, helicopter man. And helicopter man's like, okay, I guess you're like the best guy ever. I guess I'll risk my life and all my passengers to save just your mom. Um, so then it lands, pregnant woman gets on, and then not Will Smith's mom walks very slowly towards the helicopter. And then the, the building is like, I am choosing this moment to not be here anymore. <laughs> then she like falls into like abyss. She, she miss, it's like a fall off a cliff. She like falls off. She's like, it's like, <laughs> and she falls 
and she falls like a million miles, and 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 well, not Will Smith is like no! the, the helicopter's like sorry bro, and flies away, and then uh, a whole bunch of crap happens that it's really hard to remember because it's so stupid. Okay, I'm trying to. I'm trying to give you the gist here because the movie's like two hours long three quarters of it is stuff we don't need to see and then explosions so we need to see explosions because that's I mean we paid ten dollars for this ticket we're gonna see some explosions you know what I mean so eventually Will Smith not Will Smith and his friends flying ships into space because we have spaceships we have we have spaceships it's been 20 years but we have like we can just have like a person jump in a ship and we're in space. Right. They like, be like, like stealthy kind of and they're like, we're just gonna fly into the mothership. And these trained military people that are like the best in the world, they're like, eh, this is no big deal. It's not like there's any resistance. This isn't a trap that's clearly a trap that is obviously a trap that we've been trained to know that aliens use traps. So they fly in, they're like, oh shit, it's a trap. And then at that moment, Everybody that is like alien sensitive because they got affected with alien science. It's like holy McDoodle That's a trap and then of course No one can tell them that I guess because they're in space anyways, but their ships get bubbled They don't blow up their ships. They bubble them, but they blow up the bombers the aliens like contain the bombers as nukes that are on the bombers and then the bombers blow up into a little shield ball and then they're just like vaporized and they're just they're just like auto MacGuffined out of the story auto anti MacGuffin shields uh, so then the ships gently touch down boop, and the aliens are like oh no no we gotta save those guys as ships because they're cute well no they don't just touch down they they kind of crash they go and then they go, and then all of the heroes go into a cornfield because this guy really liked, like, Feel the Dreams or something. I mean, I was a big fan of Waterworld. Feel the Dreams, not so much. Anyways, so they're, like, running through corn, and the aliens have no way of detecting people other than, like, the most obvious visual acuity or sound. So they literally, like, lie in some water. They, like, lie in, like, ankle-deep water, and the aliens cannot see them. The aliens are just like, well, I clearly they disappeared, even though they were like three feet away. We saw them drop into this spot, but clearly they disappeared. So I guess we just said fuck off. And then two seconds later, our heroes just like, like get back together and they're like, man, we got a GTFO. This place is hardcore. And then they like get up, get up, get up and get up. You gotta get up, 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 up. So then they get up and, and they like steal some of the enemy ships. Always oh, running. There's so much running in this movie. The, driving and flying and there's every, this whole movie should, this movie should have been called like plane trains and spaceships because there's so much moving. They get in the spaceships and they're like, we gotta go. And then there's a whole bunch of false drama where they think Thor is dead, but Thor's not dead. Uh, but he, yeah, he's not dead. So they're just like two minutes of like needless pad drama. I love pad drama and we ought to defeat a queen who is like an alien queen but she's like 400 times the height she's like she's like Godzilla she's like Godzilla basically and she's got like a super suit and like blasters and stuff but she's a queen oh god I'm getting confused there's too many plots in this movie we know if we shoot the queen and the queen dies, then all the other guys stop because the other guys are just like drones, like, like, really, 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 really dumb. So then the, the little ball woman is like, the alien ball, the not, the space ball. God damn it. The space ball is like, you gotta get me at the fuck out of here, I'm gonna get blown up. And then the, the human guys are like, fuck that. We're gonna keep you right here. We're gonna put you in a, in a Ziploc room and you'll be all like safe and shit. And she's like, that's a bad idea. And then she gets put in the room and they like seal her away and they're gonna use a diversion and lead the queen into a whole bunch of like nukes and shit. So then there's like this, com another completely needless scene that goes nowhere where the ex-present guy is like flying 
and he's like, I'm gonna, someone has to fly uh, the plane because remote controls don't exist. Yeah, so I gotta go down with the plane and get blowed up. I'm gonna sacrifice myself. So they draw the, they take a shield thing and they draw the queen in with this fake thing. The queen walks in there. They put up the shield thingies. And then the like, she's like, the, the president's guy's like, shit, this is sucky. And then his daughter's like, it's okay, I'll save your ass. And it's like, <laughs> and then like the, the daughter's like, I love you dad. And the dad's like, yeah, I know I gotta bite it. And then the queen is in there and they put up the shield and he's, he's, he's like, this is the fourth of, <laughs> and it blows up. Thing is the queen was had her fingers behind her back the whole time because she had a shield generator in her bio suit. She like deflects the nuke and she just is like, no problem, bro. So like the queen is like walking around. She's like, I'm gonna get that space ball for myself because I need them balls. The guys are like just like shooting it with their spaceships and they're getting caught in like a sub tornado of spaceships. There's lots of like little spaceships flying around in like a tornado and shit. And they get like, they're like, oh man, we're, they're in space alien ships. So they get taken over and then, which really doesn't do anything. There's no plot to that. It just, they just get out and then they can shoot again, but their engines are all messed up. So they fly up and then they fly down really fast shooting like the alien queen, like a lot. Cause she's like in the eye of the storm. So she shoots and they get like headshots. They get like, they're like the machete guys like always oh, they're weakest from the back. So like basic physiology and weaknesses remain on aliens. So then they shoot her kind of in the back a bunch and she's like, I bit it. And of course when the queen dies, then her spaceship drill thing is stops because it is, has no automation control. And she she had to hold down a button, I guess in her spaceship. She's like, that's the drill button. If I get killed, then I guess it's off. And no aliens seem to know how to do anything without her at all. Um, because I'm sure that ship that she's she was in was full of aliens. But they just kind of ran out of money, I think. So the like plot finished. And then the mothership is like, see ya. Here's the earth. And it's like, see ya. And it stops drilling to the earth. So the earth is safe. Again. And then the alien ball is like, man, you guys are really stupid for not having just gotten rid of me in space where I was safe, but I guess I'll tell you where my super space friends are now. And that's kind of the end of the movie. And they're like, they're like huge like sequel fodder. They're like, there's a lot more aliens. That was just one queen. Now we got to go to the alien homeworld and bust a cap and day ah. Okay, the guys, well, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you appreciated my take on this particular movie. It's pretty intense. Uh, like, share, subscribe, uh, and I'll be back with more stuff soon.